I wanted to do a small extras channel video today and give you a look at a couple of videos that you wouldn't see much of otherwise. So this is a little utility that shows the status of the SNES controller. I support all the buttons and I've just got this basic diagram of the controller and I color the buttons white when you're pushing that button. Now I obviously had the LEDs over here, but I've got an upcoming video where I want to be a lot clearer on the status of the SNES controller. And there's a couple of other reasons why I wanted some separate code to do this, but I'm giving you a quick look at the utility now because I think it's a nice standalone program to have in my demos folder. This is the pair of images I created. So this is the approximate layout of the SNES control pad. And I created variants which were unpressed and button pressed. Then I replicated out the unpressed version and just deleted bits until I had a separate image for each individual button push. And in my conversion code, I saved off the first one in its entirety. And in each of the subsequent copies of the controller, I compared it against the first one and just saved the delta, which in most case was just a few tiles that changed. So the code I have wrote is quite straightforward. I load the image data up in a very similar way to you've seen me do in other programs and games. I read in the controller state. I create a mask of the buttons that have actually changed because I'm only incrementally updating when I see a difference. I call this SNES draw buttons function. Now that indexes into this table which contains each of the 12 buttons in the pushed and unpushed state, just as an image delta. And then I uncompress that into the relevant area of the tile map. And you'll see this utility used in a future video on the main channel. And the other thing I have is this clock demo. When I was editing the video for the 48 hour game jam, I needed something to stick between segments of time jump. And so I came up with the idea of using this clock, which is a throwback to the clock on the old TV series 24. And I used this counting down to show the passage of time because obviously I couldn't create a 48 hour long video. And I created that data and code just for use inside that piece of video footage. But now I've added a hookup to the same display code using the built-in real-time clock, just for some easy reuse of that work. So here's the base image data for the clock. It's just the digits and the colon separator. I superficially matched the clock to the style of the one used on the 24 series, but I did find trying to copy the way they had done some of the digits just didn't work. So I went for a straightforward seven segment LED layout, which still carried very similar look and feel. Now here's my debug image, which shows which of the tiles here were actually unique. It's not quite as efficient as the one I used in the SNEC game because I put the italicized slant on it to match the style of the TV show. Now the code is very much a hybrid between the original code I wrote to do a fixed countdown timer from a number of different presets. But in this case, I've updated the code to read the time in from the RTC using the code we wrote in the original video when we looked at that SPI device. Literally just copy out the structures. Now one interesting difference is the original code I wrote for the countdown used I2A8 using a divide by 10. But I had to do a new version calling my hex display functions because the RTC chip is outputting its numbers in binary coded decimal. The code and data for both of these utilities will be in the next toolchain release I do on Discord. It's only a small video, but I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you again soon for the next main channel video. Goodbye.